welcome back to yet another Valentine's Day extravaganza. I'm your host, me, and I'm pleased to announce that Valentine's Day is still my favorite holiday, followed closely by March 9th and June 20th. Valentine's Day, still best. Even though last year's was kind of weird. <laughs> In fact, I just watched last year's Valentine's Day video a few days ago and... To put it eloquently, it was a deep bummer. So make up for that. I'm going to make this year's video as vapid and lighthearted as possible. Without further ado, let's make some Valentine's Day related wearable paraphernalia. Much like Kate McKinnon's success, it will start with a sketch. I knew I wanted this look to embody the concept of a rebirth of love. So I designed a jacket that kind of makes it look like my head is emerging out of a giant heart, not unlike the crowning of an infant, but out of a heart. I was pleased with my design, which brings us to day one of the project. Now I start each day by spending at least 30 seconds on turning my attic into my dream studio. I can't spend more time on it than that though because I'm in the demolition phase and I don't have a respirator. So I can only work for as long as I can hold my breath. Okay, now here's the situation. I'm pretty happy with my mock-up. No, oh, hold on. Rewind. I did make a mock-up a few days earlier by just looking up some pictures of simple jacket patterns and replicating them as best as I could. Yeah, I took a little note out of Garion's page, aka the king of copying. Have you ever had an original thought? Huh? <laughs> Rest my case. I'm pretty happy with my mock-up, but it needs to be edited just to scope. It's a little too flared, so I'm gonna go back to my pattern pieces and snip away. This might be a good time to address the elephant in the room. Someone in this picture is looking quite unattractive, and it's not me, because I'm wearing clothes from Threadup. You know the drill by now. The internet's largest online consignment thrift store. Threadup is the smartest way to embrace your individual style while reducing your fashion footprint by giving new life to one-of-a-kind pieces at great prices. Fun fact, did you know that buying one item used as opposed to new will save enough water and energy to power several days of you feeling like you're better than everybody else around you? I'm just kidding. Mostly, it's worth a shot. You should probably try it. Threadup is the place to shop if you're looking for a date night outfit a date list but equally stylish everyday outfit or an outfit that invokes 1970s nostalgia let's look at some more things these Shein pants were originally estimated to be $32 but the thread up price was just $13.99 this Zara top originally $53 but I paid just $9 and these it's okay oh. shoes were originally $32 but thread up wouldn't hear of it they insisted I pay just $17.99 this is my new favorite top and you'd never guess that it's actually a bodysuit unless I wore it like this you know I actually have a friend not naming any names but she has a really long torso and her bodysuits usually hang out of her pants like that it's honestly super endearing everybody loves it for a look that says equestrian Valentine's Day chic try something like this H and blazer. It says, I'm in love, and he's a horse. Or maybe you want something a bit cozier and more Scottish feeling, like this Shein jacket. If you're trying to impress my mom, though, you're gonna want this cider skirt. Love that skirt. Here's a great Valentine's Eve fashion tip. Try wrapping a bow around yourself so that everyone knows what a gift you are. Once they've taken note and asked you out on a date, wear something that's absolutely perfect and meticulously chosen because this could determine the trajectory of your entire life. But if that's too much pressure, don't worry. I'll be your shopping buddy. In fact, I've already picked out a few things for you. That's right, if you follow my link, you'll be taken to a page where you can shop my favorites. So go check out my my favorites. Shop thread up today and use the code Makara for 35% off your first order. But yeah, as I was saying, one of us in this picture is not very attractive. And, uh, it's scary. I don't know what's wrong. Looking at the vet, I'm gonna be taking him to a specialist. But like a month ago, he just started pulling all his own feathers out. There's really been no change in his daily routine, no time I spend with him, so I don't know what's going on. I'm definitely pretty nervous about it. It's not just the aesthetics I'm worried about, I promise. We'll stop talking about it now. No, what's kind of insane is I actually did the exact same thing when I was his age. I was five years old, I started pulling all my own hair out. And the head hair has never really got to a point where people noticed, but my eyebrows and eyelashes were like completely gone. And really it just stopped because people started noticing and I started getting embarrassed. So the like craving never really went away, but the way I managed it is I just switched to like leg hairs and arm hairs. And of course, as you know, these glorious little stragglers that hang out on my ponytails. And to this day, I still tweeze my armpit. Aren't you glad you have that? Info. Now, let's switch to time lapse before I say something else. Now we just take these pieces, lay them out on our lining fabric, and Pepto Bismo. Whatever magicians say, I cannot think of it at the moment. Something else, something else. Acro Metro. Don't eat that cornbread. Now for the side panel. Enamine Patris. I know it's not that. I don't know what that means, but I heard it on the Borges. Which I haven't watched in a long time. Ding! <laughs> Use all of those pieces together, and alas, you have a lining. Speaking of lining, eggshells have a lining inside. It's just another measure of keeping the chicks safe and sound. But if there aren't any roosters around, there won't be any chicks in the eggs, making it morally unobjectable to eat them. Why am I bringing this up? Well, I just don't want you to judge. What are you guys eating? Oh, your eggs. Oh. It's like salt burn translated into chicken. Now, this is an action my chickens mainly just indulge in in the winter, and I wondered if it was some method of them seeking additional superpowers to keep them warm. For alas, evenings had been treacherously frigid, so I barricaded off a section of my dungeon for them to cozy up in. So the barricade didn't work, huh? 
Now to make the outer layer of the coat. Only two yards are required for this jacket, or the length of one and a half golden retrievers. Do you want to hear a funny story about a golden retriever? That's cool, I don't. Next, simply bind your jacket pieces together with an abundance of experience and expertise. I don't know how to explain it better than that. That's why I'm a YouTuber and not a school teacher. And this is why I'm not a world famous TikToker. Wow, those transitions so smooth. Now place the face of your lining jacket onto the face of your tweed jacket. After you sew along the top and inside edges and flip it right side out, it's time to think about making the dress. You know, I recently read a quote and it said, chewing on ice is great because it's like chewing on glass, but for girls. I like that. He's a boy. Anyway, the past few days have been spent doing relatively nothing because I ordered six yards of fabric from Joann's and they only sent me two, which I used to make the jacket. And I've been calling their customer service like consistently asking where the other four yards is. It's been like 15 days and they've provided me nary a satisfactory answer. So in the absence of any sewing content to show you, I'll show you how I spent the last 15 days. So I've actually been to Orlando, and that's not what I remember being like. But seeing that did inspire me to go ice skating. And while waiting for Courtney to tie up her skates, I spied on JJ and his adorable girlfriend, Holly. And I couldn't believe my eyes when my gaze seemingly happened to stumble upon the most important moment in history. But no, he was just helping her down. Oh my gosh, there was a moment. But anyway, we'll take this opportunity to introduce you to JJ's girlfriend, Holly. She is the sweetest. And she fits in with our group so well that she's even dared to take an RV trip with us. And even though she and JJ seem destined to be together, this moment was a false alarm and they're just boyfriend and girlfriend. Except while I was editing, I got this text. So that little bit of content just fell right into my lap. I'm really enjoying this endearing antic my friends have of getting engaged in my Valentine's videos. Remember Rollin and Janessa? Well, they're married now. Oh, and expecting. But anyway, back to Courtney and I. I think our love of winter activities started with sledding, which is sort of a gateway sport. Eventually, it'll lead to snowboarding and skiing. You might call it a slippery slope. It's a pretty affordable hobby, though. You can usually find good deals on sleds, especially if you're willing to bargain. Toboggan. Yet another day has transpired in which, regrettably, my eagerly awaited fabric has yet to grace my presence. Perhaps this is the consequence of my indulging in the acquisition of new materials, as opposed to embracing the practice of repurposing their aged counterparts. Draw feel. I was itching to get started on my dress. But how could I with such meager portions of tweed left over? How could I manufacture something presentable with such scant ingredients? I asked for a sign, which may have been a silly thing to ask for, I thought, until I noticed a burning bush in my yard, which turned out just to be a reflection of my fireplace in the window. But I took it as a sign that I should kick back, relax, play some Scrabble with the fam. <laughs> Granted, our Scrabble games typically involve a little less Scrabble, a little more... <laughs> foolishness? Does anyone uh, know what we're laughing about? No, we forget. <laughs> Shelby Peter Pan. Uh, oh, so did I. Fun fact, during this span of time while I was waiting for my fabric to arrive, I was walking everywhere because das Auto ist kaputt. There's something a little bit refreshing about the car being broken down. It's kind of nice to be forced to walk around in such beauty. Have you ever seen anything so beautiful? I mean, I'll be darned. I'm not talking like you're nightly on purpose. It's just because the face is cold. I walked to my mom's. I walked to my boyfriend. Did I just say boyfriend? What? what? Okay, so, I have a boyfriend. Let's discuss that. Via an interpretive dance about how he makes me feel. No, do you? Okay, did I sound sassy in that clip to you? Because I've spent very many minutes since then worrying that I sounded sassy. Is that a fox? I guess we'll never know. Another day without fabric. And I would do, this is unrelated, I would do anything for a bowl of chopped up zucchini right now. Anything. Other than go to the store and get some. Obvious. Also, while waiting for that fabric, I turned some t-shirts into an Ariana Grande yes and costume. Made a TikTok about it. Got started on editing this video. Oh. Garyan saw a lot of improvement in that time. Probably because I dropped a few seeds in a bowl of pistachio shells and he spends all his time looking for them. I played some pool with my aunt and had the best cheesecake ever. Then I decided my basement slash workout area could use a little sprucing up. So I decided to make it a medieval torture themed gym. The space ended up being really inspiring. In fact, Valerie and I went down there one night and ended up hanging out for four hours and came up with an outline for a whole movie. Speaking of movie, during that time I also had a girls' oh, night in the movie theater where I like to give my friends a really authentic experience by reciting the Nicole Kidman AMC spiel. After the movie, we just did girly things like watching animals give birth for a few hours. Let me tell you, that is an easy algorithm rabbit hole to fall into. <laughs> no pun intended. So yeah, in all those days, my dress fabric still didn't arrive. Uh, and now I guess I will yassify the jacket. So glad you asked. Here's the definition of yassify. 
Now, if you'll recall, my sketch called for red fur, but since I've been unable to make contact with any Clifford the Big Red Dog poachers, I discovered a suitable substitute in this bathroom rug. <gasps> to make a collar, I simply traced the top portion of my jacket pattern pieces onto the back of one of my rugs. And yes, I said rugs plural because I have three of them, and I somehow expect you to also have three of them. Now, a valuable tip I learned during my glorious days as a fabric counter girl is that sometimes your destiny is standing right there in front of you, staring you in the face. And also, you should always cut fur from the back with either a carpet knife or a pocket knife to minimize the mess. All of the fur pieces required hand sewing, which I can do anywhere, so I walked my mom's. Wait. Mm-hmm. Wait. Wait. I am waiting. Then I attached my collar to the tune of Married at First Sight. She's in love with them. On the walk home, I made another nine foot long sketch of my dress, but this time it wasn't in vain because I had gotten a notification that my fabric would be arriving any moment. See ya. I say we start that tomorrow. But alas, when tomorrow came, I found myself a bit more preoccupied with spending a good chunk of my morning watching this guy trying to cut a branch off my neighbor's tree. I don't think he's ever done it before. Don't worry, I never use that basketball hoop anyway. I don't know whether he was inexperienced or if he was just having fun with his job, but it took him about 25 minutes to finally get to the branch he was trying to cut. At long last, after weeks of waiting, I was finally free to make this sketch a reality. And in that moment, I decided I didn't like it anymore and I wanted to make this one instead. Now it was time to make a mock-up out of muslin, which is something I could have done in the three weeks while I waited for the tweed to arrive, but I couldn't because that is like something I just realized right now. <laughs> Yesterday, I didn't get much done because I ended up going to a dip party, you know, where everybody brings a dip. We were celebrating our friend's baptism, you know, she was dipped. So we did. I'm gonna try to get this dress 80% done today. Got my sidekicks, Gary and William. And between the three of us, I think we can do this. I concocted a mock-up that fit, but something just wasn't right. It prompted me to ask the same question I often ask myself about Mark Wahlberg's acting nostrils. Is that too flared? No, but it didn't match the sketch, so I had to make a new one. I seam ripped the mock-up apart, then laid the pieces atop the lining and tweed fabric. They did not protest. Hold on, are you still thinking about the fact that I have a boyfriend and you know nothing about him? Okay, let's play two truths and a lie. My boyfriend edition. He designed something that is going to the moon. He was a minor league baseball player until he tore his hibiscus. And he once performed an autopsy on a hippopotamus, which is a five-syllable word. So go ahead and comment which one you think is the lie. If you guess correctly, I'll heart your comment. And if you guess incorrectly, I'll be even more likely to heart your comment. So I came to a bit of a crossroads with the dress, wherein it was basically finished. But when I put it on inside out to make some alterations, I found myself inexplicably captivated by the crimson allure of the lining side. Faced with this conundrum, I had no choice but to seek resolution from the masses. And they preferred the red satin side, meaning all those days, all those weeks, all those countless hours spent waiting for the tweed fabric were for nothing. Or were they? Yeah, they were. I could have just made it out of satin to begin with and had this video out weeks ago. Before adding the fur trim, I checked with my followers to make sure they approved. Um, they didn't, which was fine. I just had to make a new sketch. And then before adding the heart cutout, I for some reason double checked with them again. And y'all just really like the basic things in life, don't you? Not a problem, just had to adjust my sketch again. And then, due to the simple nature of my audience's taste, I realized I guess I'm done. Now my dad fixed my Barbie car, so I was able to celebrate by taking myself and Valerie on a little spin. While she was in the gas station, I noticed some little girls staring at the car. Then I was approached by the gas station attendant who apparently keeps up with my videos and whom I now consider a buddy. Good question. Is everything going okay? Yeah, why do you ask? Well, because I've been watching your videos and I watched the last one I was reading some of the comments. So I was just kind of concerned, you know. I had a really bad year last year, yeah. but a lot better now. Well, good. All right. See yeah. You <laughs> see you. I'm Barbie. He's busy making crafts tonight. Uh, Midge. No way picture with it if you want. Do you want us to be in the picture? Yeah. Okay. And that's why you should always loiter in parking lots. Here's the issue. I made this to be the front, but everybody likes the lining better, which is fine, except the back looks like this. We gotta somehow make it cute. I messed around with some trims and I thought this pink trim looked perfect, so I don't know why I scrapped it. I went with this red trim instead, which I guess is also all right. This is how it turned out. Then the most amazing thing happened as I was rolling up the trim to put it away, I realized it looked like a little flower, so I attached it to a ribbon and made a choker, which was great, except it meant I needed to make a new sketch. Which brings us to the crescendo of our tale.
What's that, pray tell? You still yearn to see the pink side of the dress? Well, far be it from me to withhold your wishes from you. So, now that you've seen both, shoot straight with me, Pookie Bear. Which one do you like better? And do you prefer happy content or sad content? And do you think the dress is too basic? Should I have done fur? Should I have done a heart cutout? Do you think flowers on our necks is gonna be the next big trend? Valerie does, that's her prediction. By the way, if you're wondering who Valerie is, she's the most encouraging person in the world. Cute! Love. Yeah. Giving. She's also my brother's girlfriend. She's also, also a fantastic model, so I had to throw this other outfit I made on her and do a little shoot. Who are those girls that are like into espionage? Totally spies? Close. Charlie's Angels. Yeah! yeah. <laughs> And if you're wondering if this dress also looks good on brunettes, um, much better actually. So no matter what you look like, go ahead and make the dress. Or make anything. Or take a nap. Do the dishes. I don't care. And don't forget to follow the link in my description, check out ThreadUp, and use the code MAKERA for 35% off your first order. Love ya!